It has been a little over 5 years since I made my first animated video and since then I went through the same struggles that you may be experiencing right now. From being excited to create something awesome, then opening the software and staring at the blank screen for 30 minutes, then click on a random tutorial just to give up halfway through because you found another tutorial and then you realize that this is going to be harder than you thought and in the end you give up feeling bad for wasting your time. Yeah, been there. But making a living out of motion design today, I want to share with you 5 things that I wish someone had told me before I started. So you can skip all this beginner hell and become exponentially better motion designer with a strategy that's faster and smarter. Let's get to it. Point 1. How to actually learn and progress fast. There is an endless amount of tutorials on YouTube and don't get me wrong, they are awesome. In the end, I create tutorials too. But that is where the problem arises because you can pretty easily feel overwhelmed. And following tutorials just for the sake of creating something isn't the most optimal way. So if you really want to progress quickly, here are two things that you should do instead. If you have any animation idea, just start working on it. And once you hit a roadblock, that is when you watch a tutorial or ask for help. So that way you are actively solving a specific problem and you are immediately applying it into practice, which is going to be way more powerful for the technique to stick in your skill set in the future as well. The second way is something that I use a lot and it's just simply recreating what I like. It's like when you see someone else's work and think, oh wow, I wish I could do that. So all you need to do is just screen record or download the video and then you go analyze it and try to recreate it frame by frame. Again, you are not just following a random tutorial but you are pushing yourself to find ways how to solve a specific problem. And if you want to take it even further here, always think how you can expand or add a creative twist to the original idea. As an example, I once came across to this hand drawn animation at the website of the Dark Matter Agency. Shout out to you guys, love your work. And it was exactly the time when I thought I want to be able to do this as well. And I had no idea how they did it so I just had to figure out my own process. And because like I said, I wanted to add my own creative twist, I recorded myself as a reference for this. And I changed their basketball theme to me catching headphones. Then I went to Blender and I created animation with a grease pencil, which again, I wasn't really too comfortable with yet. But this pushed me to go and learn more about the grease pencil and find specific tutorials on this. The next point is something that we all experience and that is a creative block. The feeling when you're so excited to create something awesome only to catch yourself 30 minutes later staring at the screen. I have a very simple rule here. Do the smallest step possible to move the project forward. And I figured that this is something that works really well for me. Even if it just means to create a simple shape or sketch a rough storyboard or make the most basic animation. Because once you physically get something out on the screen or on the paper, you will then allow your brain to focus on the next steps and potentially come up with new ideas. For example, this is one of the animations that I made before this video. If you want to learn how to do this animation, then you can check it over here. And when I was coming with this idea, I had no idea where I wanted to take it. So I started with the obvious. I took the video, cut myself out with a roto brush and applied the blur. And the next ideas and steps came naturally once I had these fundamentals in place. I also want to mention here that the more experienced you are, the more creative you are going to be. Because with every project that you do, you naturally move the baseline of what you think is possible for you to create. This aligns pretty well with the next point and that is always whenever possible create a storyboard even before you open After Effects or any other animation software. Because if you don't create any sort of roadmap, you will waste hours just wandering around and trying different ideas. And if you're like me, you will always think how something can be improved again and again, and then you will just get stuck in the perfectionist loop, which is just gonna drain your energy. Now the storyboard doesn't need to be super detailed or precise, but having at least a basic one right from the start will give you so much clarity and direction which you can rely on. I personally like sketching on a piece of paper, but if my vision is clear enough, then I go into Illustrator straight away. Here you see some sketches for a couple of my logo animations, you can see I'm trying to break them down and just seeing what is possible. And of course as I draw them, I also try to visualize them in my head. On the other side, sometimes I like building the storyboard directly in Illustrator. This usually happens when my idea is clear enough and I want to explore the assets that I could use. So in this Puma example, I was searching for videos of the animal that would fit, footage of the shoes, and I can also directly test which color would work the best and create extra graphics as you can see on the left side. Now you know how to progress, how to gain inspiration and the importance of storyboards. So now we have to focus on matching the animation with the audience. Because so many beginners, including me, just ignore this. Always keep the target viewer in your mind. You are so proud of your work. You created an awesome, fast-paced, flashy animation with great music. Just to realize that the target audience likes calm and minimalist style. So before you start animating, always ask yourself, who exactly is going to watch this? And what I want to make these guys feel when they watch the video. And based on these two things, the decision process is going to be much easier. 
As an example, I have this North Face animation. Snowboarding is about fun, energy, cool stuff in general, and that was exactly the vibe that I wanted to get. Or here, where the cubes represent how Notion helps you stay organized. And also with this minimal clean style that matches exactly what the brand is about and what the users want to feel. So remember, it doesn't matter how good your animation is if it doesn't align directly to the target audience. And we are at the last point, and this one is huge. Sharing your work or progress online. I know this can feel intimidating and scary because you feel like people are going to judge you, but hear me out. I promise you I felt the exact same way, but luckily there is a super simple solution because no one says that you need to be a professional. So I turned this completely around and positioned myself as a beginner who just likes sharing his hobby. And I shared my weekly progress. At that time it was about 3D animation because that's what I wanted to learn, but it can be anything else that you want to learn. Now there are two main things that happen here and are extremely valuable in my opinion. And I don't mean like getting followers or going viral or stuff like that. Those things are nice, but they don't really matter. The first is you convince yourself that people are interested in your work and what you do. I was never someone who posted too much on social media in general, but seeing like, oh my God, someone actually likes it and wants to learn from me is such a huge boost and great mindset shift. And the second thing is you just hold yourself accountable. Because in my example, since I created a weekly series, I just had to make sure to deliver every single week. So that way you create instant improvement and feedback loop. And as a bonus, of course, you grow an online audience and potentially pick up some client work. But that is a long topic for another video. So those were five things that I really wanted to share. Obviously, there are so many more points that I could cover but didn't make it into this video. So if you want to keep learning on a regular basis, I run a weekly newsletter for which you can sign up completely for free. So check it out and let me know down below in the comments if you have any other things that you wish you knew before you started. I would love to read them. And finally, you may have noticed, but this is my first ever talking only video here on YouTube. So. I'm really curious about what you guys think, if you like this video and if you found it helpful. Of course, again, let me know in the comments or just subscribe or like this video. That's enough for me. Alright, that's it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.